Hello, everyone. Hello. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I see uh, coral. coral timbers. Brown. Here. Clark. I have not muted. Clark. Dash. Here. We have a farm. There are some technical issues right now we're taking care of. Then we'll proceed. I haven't muted. Okay with it before we move on. Um, Meg at 6:45. If you can give us a five-minute warning, I would like to conclude the workshop at 6:50 so we can get a 10-minute break before moving on. Got it. All right. Um, as of now, I'd like to open up the budget workshop for the fiscal year. Jody, if you want. Okay. Um, so uh, I sent out a draft to everyone. Um, and they hear you. Can everyone hear me? I, see I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. I hear you. Okay. So I sent out um, a draft to everyone. If um, anybody wants a copy, there is a copy on the website under the agenda for the budget um, workshop. There is a draft budget there as well. Um, so just to, um, I guess we can just, do you want to just go line by line to the draft? Yeah, as we've done it in the past. So everyone should have page four as the first page. So the changes on there, I just, I left fund, we did generate enough surplus to keep it the same. So I left surplus the same. We've all, the last, I looked back through at least 2016, we've averaged about 200 to 230 on average per year. So I just left it um, the same as what we had last year. Um, like other alcohol beverages increased just a tiny bit. So um, I've pretty much been maximizing most of them as much as we could, as long as they are things that will pretty much be the same from year to year. Um, well, other licenses went down just a little bit. You're only allowed to anticipate whatever you receive. <coughs> most you can anticipate is what you received in the prior year, unless you have proof that you um, are going to get more, like if you raise rates or something like that, you can do a calculation and certify. But for the most part, the most you can put is what you received last year. So other licenses were down a little bit, kind of makes sense with COVID that, you know, something <coughs> down like that. Um, our interest on taxes went up a little bit. So um, increase that as well. Interest uh, stayed about the same. 
The second page um, is our, um, our rent of municipal property went down just a little bit. Um, Leatherhead has closed, so we will not be getting that um, outdoor rent that we had and um, the nutrition center has been closed, so they're prorating that as well. Um, so that's down slightly. The lake fees down just a little bit, which honestly I was, I think we were all kind of happy last year that it wound up being as high as it was because we didn't know, you know, what was going to happen. Um, the state is allowing you because 2020 was such an anomaly, hopefully. I mean, even though 2021 kind of seems to be slightly on the same path at this point, but um, for right now, they're letting you average three years if you want, rather, if you had a really big hit in one year because of COVID, they are letting you average three years. Um, I don't think too much of our revenues really were affected so much by it. The late we could average a little bit, it would bring it up like 2,500 because we just raised the rates about two years ago. So average, the third year ago was still re relatively low. So an average wouldn't greatly increase it, but we could bump it up just a little bit um, if we needed to. Um, campground loyalty kept the same. Um, then page five is state aid for right now. Those numbers haven't come out yet, but just keeping it the same for right now. Um, six construction code fees. Um, our actual receipts for 2020 were a little bit higher, but I think we should be conservative and keep it the same because a lot of the um, permits that we had last year were for DR Horton, which is pretty much wrapping up. So that I would say 2020 is kind of a, a higher year than what would typically be received. Um, for page nine, for right now, I just, the grants will be a wash. Any grant, there's an in and an, it's a revenue and appropriation. The only thing that would change would be if there's a local share. So over when we get to the appropriations, you'll see our local share um, for the NPP grant. Other than that, um, I just left the grants blank for our draft purposes. So we don't have to keep worrying about changing numbers. Page 10, um, Uniform Fire Safety Act, that pretty much stayed the same. Rental inspections, pretty much the same. Uh, payment in lieu of taxes, pretty much the same. Cemetery contribution, vacant property registration. Um, we really probably shouldn't have even have put that in the budget a few years ago. We just kind of started doing it because we needed to have more revenues, but we knew that that was something that wasn't gonna really be sustain sustainable. And it's kind of a good thing that these houses are not vacant, but you know, the houses are selling and there are less vacant properties to be registered. Wait, so. did you say that again? There's less yeah. vacant properties. Yeah, that's how the house is being sold. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And then the conifer pilot pretty much is the same. Um, on page 10, at 10, I don't know why it says 10N, but it says sheet 10N. Um, sale of property last year, we had put in um, the land, the sale for um, 335 Boston and the wetlands deed restriction. The um, wetlands deed restriction, unfortunately, did not wind up happening, um, but there's nothing for this year anticipated. Um, the sale of property, we did have two land sales in January, so we could put 40,000 there. Again, I always caution with putting in these one shot things. Like we're kind of having a problem this year because we did it last year. Now we're kind of in the same boat. So, um, but we could potentially put in 40,000 under sale of property, actually 38. It was not our, after selling cost, it was two properties at 19 each. So um, 38,000 that we could put in the budget. Um, sorry, there's more people trying to get in. So that's page 10. Um, and that pretty much sums up the revenues. Um, if we go to 12, <clears throat> we start the appropriations. Um, nothing, nothing real drastic on sheet 12. Nothing drastic on 13. I kept um everything relatively the same.
Um, really everything from 12 through 15 is relatively the same. 15A, we have um, police salaries. Do you want to talk about them at all or you want me to just kind of go through them? Um, uh, it doesn't really matter. We have the same numbers. Um, I have the I have it printed out here. We have um, but police salaries. We have an increase. It's like eighty five. A little bit of that is we had taken out um, just a little bit of crossing guards last year from COVID. Um, but then we also have I think one new hire in, and then just step increases. So. Um, and then you can see court other expenses are pretty pretty increased. We, hopefully that will go back down if courts open back up and things start to get a little bit back to normal, it would go down. Right now we ha unfortunately have to budget an extra 44,000 because we guaranteed Hamilton, I think it's 93 or something right around. Okay, somewhere right around 95,000 is what we have to give to Hamilton, which was anticipated to be basically made up of like 36,000, just normal budget and then 60,000 from, um, fines and costs, but because the courts have been closed, the revenue for last year really obviously had a major shortfall. So um, hopefully that's a one-time you know, thing for 2021 and hopefully we will be back on track. But, Hi, uh, this is Carl Timbers. I just, I'm just curious. Uh, so we guaranteed Hamilton 90, over $90,000 and we couldn't satisfy that because of COVID. But because Perfect. of the agreement, they still want their full ninety thousand. Is that the way it works? Yeah, you don't want it. No. The, what it is, Carl, is the the revenue that we collect is about sixty thousand dollars is credited towards the ninety six thousand dollars. So if you don't make that revenue, you still have to pay them because it's part of the price. Do you understand that? I do. Um, my concern is that um, if we enter into more shared services agreements and they have these guaranteed payments and COVID is still with us or another, God forbid, something else comes, um, we get stuck with it. And well, if we had employees, we would have been still having the employees. So. Carl, our cost to run the court was about mm -hmm. $150,000 a year. Just, just as a piece of information there. So there's still, so maybe there's still a savings, even though we're giving up 90. Because um, I was thinking maybe, because it sounds weird, maybe we could have offset with layoffs or something if that was possible. Um, I'm just thinking in terms of more shared services agreements. If, 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 if there's no safeguard, Carl, like, I don't think we have anybody to lay off, but um, you know, <laughs> it's their case, but I don't, we don't, we're on a bare bones staff here at City Hall. Yeah. That's it. I mean, it's a good thought, definitely, but nobody could really predict it. That's the thing, you know? Right. So we should be on target for next year to make it. Happen. All right. Terry's mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, solid waste disposal. We had talked about this. Uh, I don't know if we talked about this or not, but I talked about other people because of COVID. That solid waste, the tipping fees that have have pretty much increased a good amount. We got back a little bit from our um, the CARES Act money that we did get. We were able to get about eight thousand back towards our tipping fees, which was nice. Um, but obviously we don't know anything yet for 2021 right now, there's not any additional funding and plus the rates are going up a little bit with ACUA because everyone's kind of um, by different things. So anyway, an increase for that, um, that went up about 25,000. <laughs> um, pension. The, I bumped ahead a little bit, just slight increases for group insurance, about 2%, um, not a very big increase from the state health benefits, luckily. And um, I put a 2% increase on the um, workers' comp and liability as well. That's on 15A. Uh, 
Um, most of the utilities on page 17, pretty much keeping the same. What page are you on? 17? Yes. Yeah, and then if you go to page 19, that's our statutory expenditure, social security and pension. Um, the public employees pension went up about 6,000 and the police pension went up about 37,000. So it was a little bit of a um, jump this year. And then you can see I, our unemployment compensation, we had increased last year about 10,000 because of COVID knowing that people potentially um, be filing a lot more claims. So brought that back down to the 7,500 that we had been anticipating um, prior to that. Um, sheet 24 um, for the grants, it's just the only thing we have in there right now, like I mentioned before, is our match for the NPP grant. That's what that 25,000 is. It does seem like there will be like another round of grants. Um, 26, just kept capital improvement from the same. That's money if anyone's not aware of what that is. Basically, we set aside a small amount of money that we put over in our capital fund. And that way, if we do a bond ordinance, we have enough for a down payment on that. The law requires a down payment usually. So that kind of provides that um, initial down payment. Thank you. Um, sheet 27, our debt service, one of our bond issues issuances um, was paid off last year. So you can see debt service went down $100,000 in bond principal. So that was a nice um, you guys. And then also on sheet 28, um, emergency authorizations. We had a couple of emergencies last year, like budget emergencies during the year where if you don't have something budgeted for it, then you have to raise that the next year. We didn't have any of those in mute themselves we, we keep getting like some feedback so if you're I'm just gonna say that i can't hear you jody i'm going to mute everyone so if you need to unmute, just unmute yourself if it's something that you're going to, you know, public or something. And then our reserve for uncollected taxes on sheet 29. That went up about 19,000. That is a formula set by the state um, based on your prior year tax collection. You can use a three year average, which is what we typically do, because that usually gives us a little bit higher um, percentage. Luckily, our tax rate did increase slightly. In 2019, it was 97.35. This year, it was nine, or 2020, it was 97.4. But unfortunately, that still is it was much higher several years ago. So it's still been, unfortunately, kind of a lower average each year. Um, so um, the average is 97.51, I believe. So that made the reserve from collected taxes be 269, which on kind of on a side note, we had, I know there were some emails circulating, we're gonna get ready to start a new round of foreclosures. Mm -hmm. Desperately needed. We basically transferred, I, when I analyzed the taxes, we transferred subsequent taxes. That means municipal liens that were already existing, not new one, $200,000 of taxes. That's huge. And those are basically money that we're, there's a good chance we might never collect if we don't foreclose on those properties and get them back on a tax paying basis. So I think it's really good that we're gonna try to move on with a, another round. Um, so hopefully we can get that number lowered each year. Um, all right, so that takes us through current fund. Um, just to kind of summarize, um, like the biggest changes really, I had sent this out, but the biggest changes, do you want me to read through all the whole list that I sent out, I think? Yeah. Okay. So 
Other licenses went down about 5,000, but interest on taxes went up about 13,000. Um, we had that rent decrease of about 4,000. Again, that was Leatherheads in the senior center closing. Um, the lake decreased about 11,000, um, of which we could probably increase 2,500 if we use an average. Um, vacant property decreased 19,000. Um, and the sale of property and the wetlands deed restriction that went down 120,000 if we don't put anything else in there this year. Um, that's on the revenue side. And then on the appropriation side, the police salaries and wages, um, an 80,000 increase, a court increase of 44,000, um, solid waste increase of 24,000, group insurance increasing 5,000, and workers' comp and liability um, insurance increasing 6,000, a pension increase of 43,000, um, and debt service decreased 100,000. So those are the biggest changes overall. Um, on the budget. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. I can go, we can also go over the utility budget, but I we probably could just go through current first. Does anybody have any questions, suggestions, the comments? Solid waste increase, that, is that due to the rates increase or is that due just to people being home? Both. Okay. I think it's both. Yeah. There's less things being recycled now too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were big changes in recycling. Which, I mean, I see it myself. I mean, I'm a big recycler and I have so much more trash than I ever used to because mm -hmm. I can't recycle half the stuff I used to. Will we not be able to hear if they have questions? Um, yeah, they can unmute yeah. themselves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I, just, I, I wanted to add something about the, um, the increase with the solid waste, uh, waste removal. Um, Lisa, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't that the meeting that I attended at the ACUA? Was that what that was about? Yes. They're, okay. They can tell you what increases. I think it might have been more along the lines of the water. But. No, they had, they were saying about the solid waste going up because of the casinos being closed and Atlantic City is a large uh, portion of that. So being that Atlantic City couldn't cover their portion like they normally do, it was split among the other towns to cover. So I think that's what the increase is about, if I'm correct. That, that makes sense. That's it. I just wanted that just because that's what I heard in the meeting that it was going up because Atlantic City um, wasn't, they, they didn't have enough like they usually do. So the other municipalities had to kind of pull in and help them out basically. Yeah, and there was a change in something to do with their rates as well, different types of waste ACUI has to collect and they had to raise their rates as well based on their increased cost and obviously passing that through to the different municipalities. Does anyone else have any questions? Are the course back over, what is it doing? Honestly, I'm not, I, I'm not the are sure. open, they're doing all virtual and they're putting the code enforcement issues and things like that to the back burner until they can get through the uh, Zoom meetings. That's the last I heard. So I guess there, there must be some fines collected then, I would guess, right, based on- They are collecting fines because okay. we get several people come in here and we, we okay. contacted the court administrator there and they are open every day. I guess no court, but um, they are collecting fines that, like I said, people come in here trying to pay and we send them on to Hamilton. They can pay online, but a lot of them don't have the ability, to, so they give it No, I was just asking because it seems every time Director Emmer gives a report, issuances from PD is up and mm -hmm. continues to grow. So I was just wondering. Meaning tickets? Oh, we're yeah. talking about July, they will be going back. Is there a way to get a report from the court of what we collect? Or, um, is I could probably email Janelle and see like if she can give us some kind of updated report. Is that what they're collecting on our behalf? Yeah. yeah. Is that where you got that number from, Jody, or is that? Um, I had gotten some information from her a few couple months ago, and then I just I was able I know what we collected before we went over you know for, for part of the year I know what we had. 
um, so that that number that collection number could have grown since that time you communicated with her. Yeah, I think I had asked her, but as of the end of the year, but I'll double check and see if she can get me a, a more firm number so we know for sure. Hi, this is Kim Hess, New Orleans Avenue. Can you hear me? Yes. I could I ask a question at this meeting? I, I'm not sure. Absolutely. Okay. What I wanted to know was, um, is the GIF dividend still available? I mean, is it still, is there a reason it's not on the um, budget? We don't really get, we're not in that GIF anymore and we have not been getting. Um, we didn't wind up getting it last year, did we? Yeah, we did. In 2020? I think we still yeah. have it. Yeah, but that was not, when we had emailed Paul and he had said not, he said state wouldn't let us put it in the budget last year. We did get something last year, but I don't know okay. if we're getting one this year. 30. Yeah, the state wouldn't let us put it in last year because we did have it in the budget originally. Are, are we still getting that, the dividend? I really don't think we got one this year. This year we did, but last 2020. year. 2020. It was. Yeah, I believe we did. We did. 33,000 last year, I believe. That was 2019. Was it? Yeah. It was 2019. Because I just did all the year end stuff. I didn't, I didn't see it. So it would be somewhere. <laughs> we can check, but we weren't allowed to last year. I know for sure. I remember the state just allowing it. We had to come back. Remember in the budget, we talked about it at our budget meeting. We had to take it out. That answer your question? But you're basically saying you, you, it wasn't in last year's budget? No, it wasn't in last year's budget. The state made us take it out. Oh, oh, okay. So I was review. I had seen something that prior to the state taking it out, I guess. It was in two thousand last year's draft originally had it in our um, I think our introduced budget possibly. And then when we send it to the state to review, they asked for backup. And then what we got backup from the GIF was that it was most likely not likely for us to have a very, you know, to have basically anything. And so the state made us take it out. Okay, so we're not getting it anymore. Thank you. Jody, but you should explain probably what that, that was the old GIF. Yeah, that was the the previous, we were used to be in the Atlantic County GIF and that was from years that we were there. They close a year every year. So basically at some point, the years that we were in are now closed and there's no more dividend to be given based on that. So that leads me into this question. Has there been any conversation with Hardenberg? Because I know that's been a topic, I think that he brought up. About getting a dividend, you mean? No, with GIF and everything. Oh. Um, I haven't recently okay. talked to them. I mean, we were still versus the dividend we were getting. We were still paying. We were still paying a lot more. You know what I mean? It, the GIF didn't equal the dividend didn't equal the savings. Uh, yeah. Do you remember how much we saved the first year? I think it was close to two hundred. I, I was gonna say it was like hundred and fifty. Like we, I think we were paying over four. Maybe we pay like two fifty to statewide or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely more than the 30. It was a large decrease, and we only got to go in that GIF because we had such a good um, percentage of, I guess, the lower the percentage that what was, I forget what the percent actually was for claims and things like that. We had such a good record, they allowed us to come in, and that's, they don't allow all municipalities to come in. Anybody else with any questions or comments? What's the total budget so far? I mean, we don't, I mean, technically we have enough in the cap, a bank cap that we don't, it's a, it's a, there's a 12.8 increase right now. So I know council doesn't want to do it, an increase that large. I think our cap bank would allow us to. So I don't think legally you have to change anything, but obviously that's, you know, I'm sure council wants to change something. Yeah, there's work to be done. Yeah, I think once uh, with our banked cap, we're fine um, tax levy wise. So that's not an issue. It's just, and 12.8 cents equals about About like two hundred forty-five thousand. If you wanted, that's like to bring it to zero, obviously. Because so. every penny is about nineteen thousand for us. 
our assessed valuation went down just a teeny tiny bit, unfortunately, so that didn't help either. Um, but for the most part, it's almost the same as what it was last year. So just something to keep in mind, 19,000 is a penny. We're so, you know, it's a shape, we're like small, but like there's, you know, cause we are so small, there's not, you know, too many, it's hard to make a lot of changes. So, you know, so. So right now the council is spending two hundred forty some thousand more than they're taking in. Is that what you're saying? No, two hundred forty five thousand more than last year. We have to take in right. to pay to do right. what we did this year. And it's a mix. That's why I did that like analysis. It's not like all like it's not like we just lost two hundred fifty thousand of revenue and you know what I mean. There was there's changes on both sides. So it's kind of why I like to go through and kind of give you a summary of you know what changed. Right. Any other uh, comments or questions out there? From the public council? Uh, this is Councilman Dash. I just had a quick question. The um, in the income part for the for the campground, the three thousand dollars is that what we get paid for use of the campground for the year? I think it was a little harder than that. It, it wound up being. I mean, we could bump that up. I can look at the answer. I just they, I, they had I, a really I, good year last year, Steve. Mm -hmm. Because of COVID, because probably. Because of COVID, so it could be that um, just to be prudent, not to budget that much for next year. But so so do so is it is it set up where we get a percentage or is it a flat rate we charge? Ten percent. Okay, thank you. And it was the actual receipts last year were fifty nine hundred. Mm -hmm. The year before that was four thousand. And the year before that was 4,500. So we could bump that up to like 4,000. I just don't, I, I'm always like of the mindset to be a little conservative so we can generate some surplus and we don't, if, it, if there's a bad year for some reason, it's not, I mean, that's not a drastic big one to change. So, I mean, it's no big deal to change that to 4,000. Got it, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Hey, Jody, it's Keith. I have a quick question for you. Um, I was talking to a couple people uh, directly, like uh, Chuck from Mullica Township, and then um, as also Aspawn Tree Service about what they do with their chippings and also their leaves. Mm -hmm. Are, I thought that we take everything to the ACUA because of our stormwater tracking that we do, um, so we have a disposal record of it. Are we allowed to, um, if we find and enter into an agreement to get rid of our leaf waste and our chip waste, are we allowed to take that somewhere else? We could check with, I mean, Brian might know more environmentally, but I don't see why not. Because I know that we pay the tipping fees no matter, you know, and it is a good deal. We pay the tipping fees no matter what we put in the dumpster, solid wood or leaves or whatever, but it may be something that, um, I'm going to start to look into now and see if it if we can do it that way, it'll save us money on tipping fees with the ACUA too as well through public yeah. works. Yeah. All right. Just wanted to ask. I, I didn't necessarily need an answer tonight. I'll look into it with you, and then we can we can report back. Okay. I don't know if it's something. I mean, I guess depending how it is, it might be something we'd have to like advertise if it was like more than one per. You know, like rather than just give it to some. Like, you know, I don't know. I guess we'd have to see what the situation would be. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think the idea would be we just give it to them for free. Um, so I don't know if we'll, we'll have, it's not like we're getting paid or paying them to get rid of it. Um, if we're getting rid of it for free, I guess we'll talk to Ryan and find out. I know with all the stormwater paperwork we do, I don't know if it's possible, but um, I mean, we probably send 30, 30 some dumpsters of leaves out of here every year. Also tree chipping, you know, uh, we could drive it right there and dump it. So. It's just an idea. So we'll look into that. Thank you. Keith, are you saying that could be a savings? Yeah. Yeah. Per dumpster we pay. So if we could cut 30, I'm sorry, I muted myself. If we could pay, if we could cut 30 dumpster loads out of leaves every year, that, that would be a savings. I, I'm not sure per, and I should notice because we were just going through it with FEMA, but I'm not sure what the tipping fees are per container. Um, I'm sure Jody will know and we could report back with that, but if we can get it enter into an agreement, that could be savings for our, our end. And what I understand from the guy from Aspa and also Mullica, 
they fight over the chips and they fight over the leaves. They want them for the pig farm. So um, something we'll look into pretty quickly. Oh, that's good. Hi, this is Nanette. Can you hear me? Oh, good. Uh, I had a question about the rent decreases for Leatherheads and the Senior Center. Um, doesn't don't they have signed leases for a certain period of time? Say that again. Don't they have leases that are in effect? When that's the one with Leatherheads, we let them out of it due to COVID, being when they were not open, right? Yes. Uh huh. Uh, what, about, what about the senior center? That's uh, at least with the county, isn't it? Yeah, most of it's considered like a trash reimbursement. So if they're not running their program, there's not really any trash to reimburse. Is that, that's what we get for giving them that building? Yeah. Oh, geez. All right, thanks. Anybody else with any questions or comments? Oh, one other thing I had um, when I was closing up, we had, um, speaking of the Egg Harbor North Earth that I mentioned earlier, so we get, um, when they close on a block and lot, we get, or actually when they get a certificate of occupancy, we get a development fee on those properties. So um, we have, um, we've collected $76,500 in development fees last year. That's just the current fund portion. That's not including the piece that we put in the utility. So we set that up as a reserve, basically to pay debt service. So we could potentially use a look. We have plus there was, I think 18,000 from the year before. So there's about 94,000 in that reserve sitting there. I'm not saying to necessarily use all of it, but it might be something to think about, especially because if the water treatment plant really does sell and we have a circle, we're gonna pay off debt. So we won't need that reserve to pay debt. It would really be used for something else. So if we're, going to use it, there's going to be debt, there is debt service in our budget this year. So it's, you know, it is a use that it was intended for. Again, it would be more of a one shot type of thing, because it's not going to be regenerated, most likely, maybe on a very small scale, if, unless they wind up, you know, moving on to another portion, and that's renegotiated, but that could be much more than a year down the down the road. So, um, but I just want to put that out there that there is um, a reserve sitting out there that we could potentially use also as well. So, um, <clears throat> I don't like to use too many one shot things, but I know, you know, I know people don't want to have a huge increase and that is something that was set aside for debt service. So it could be used to offset our debt service this year. Um, okay, so next um, we can talk about the water um, budget, which is sheet um, 31, I believe on your um, packet. So unfortunately due to COVID, um, you can't um, send any unpaid water bills, can't go to, they can't collect interest and they can't um, go to tax sale. And usage besides that use, so at the end of the year, we had over $100,000 receivable that normally would have gone to tax sale and pretty much would have been almost nothing. Um, and then our usage was down about 20,000 gallons, um, which kind of makes sense because you know businesses were closed, the schools were closed. Um, so a lot of the, uh, there was a good chunk of usage that was down. So our rents, you can see the utility basically follows the same rule. You can only budget whatever you received the prior year. So that's down um, a significant amount, unfortunately, because of that. Um, the miscellaneous revenue is up just a little bit. Fire hydrants stayed the same. And then um, we also in the utility fund have those same development fees. So rather than have to have a, any kind of rate increase this year, um, I use some of that reserve. That's what that 23,000 is. That is not the whole reserve. Quite a bit of, um, of um, the development fees came in this year for the utility. Um, so that is the revenues. Um, and then if you go to the second page, um, or sheet 32, uh, just a slight decrease in the salaries. Um, 
we never, last year we've kind of budgeted for like a full-time person that never really now with it selling, we're obviously probably not hiring another full-time. So just kind of based on who we actually have a couple of part-time people. And then um, Tim, we're kind of splitting right now between public works and utility. Um, so a slight decrease there. I kept other expenses the same, same with engineering and legal. And then the ACUA, um, that's a set amount they give us um, an amount for what they collect for the wastewater. So that is um, the amount for ACUA. And then sheet 32B, um, debt service, um, not too big, just went down just a little bit. Obviously we've been paying down bonds a little bit each year. Um, so the principal, one of our bond payments also on the utility side also was finished last year, same as our current fund side. Um, so just a slight decrease there. Um, and then the one, the payment of bond anticipation notes, we had, you have to make a minimum payment on a note after three years. So one of our notes reached its third year. So that's why that increased just a little bit. Um, with any walk, hopefully we'll be paying most of that off. Um, and then sheet 33 just kept social security and unemployment the same. Um, so no real change for the utility. We have to keep an eye on it because if it, if we don't wind up completing the sale and usage is down again, we are going to have to think about a rate increase if there's not, but hopefully this year we can, um, you know, get through without having to do any kind of rate increase on the utility. Anything else, Jody? Nope, that's it. Well, you went to the last time. All right. Um, again, anybody in the public or any other council would have any comments or questions, we're going to conclude the workshop in about four minutes so we can have a 10 minute break before our uh, common council meeting. Is there any questions in the chat? No, no questions in the chat. Uh, Kim, Kim Hess again from New Orleans Avenue. I do have one question regarding the um, when when um, the American ends up taking over, if and when they do, will this change significantly for us at this at that point? Since we will no longer, the bonds will be paid off and everything. And and how will that all transition? Will we have another budget meeting? I mean, that won't be done during before this year's budget would be adopted. I don't believe, but I think you still have to have a utility budget and everything because you you'll still have to pay. Even though we'll be paying off debt, some of the debt can't be paid off immediately, so it'll basically be sitting in a fund. So we'll still have to have a utility budget to basically. I guess, pull money from reserves and then put it to pay off the debt service. So for right now, kind of operate, assuming at this point, like we kind of have to go by a full year, it probably won't really wind up being a full year. And I have a feeling we'll wind up having some kind of adjustments throughout the year, but at least this way, everything will be budgeted if we need it. It's there in the utility, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you. We do have another budget workshop scheduled uh, you right. before a council meeting. Okay. Yeah, March 25th. March 25th. So okay. there is a, Kim, there is another budget workshop similar to this. I, I would love to go. I won't be available though, unfortunately. Anyone else from uh, council or public have any comments or questions? If not, I would like to ask for a motion to adjourn the budget workshop. I make a motion. Second. All right. Second, Brown. Thank you. This concludes the budget workshop. We will reconvene at 1900 hours for common council meeting. All right. All right. I'd like to welcome everyone back to the common council meeting for February 25th, 2021. If I can have a roll call, please. <clears throat> Bram. Bram. Clark. Here. Dash. Here. Heist will not be present tonight. Sefton? Here. Timber? Trifall? Wright? Here. Richie? Here. Brown? 
both were present during the budget, so I'm sure they may have in some issue, but I'm sure they'll join in. We'll make we'll yeah. recognize that when it happens. Wow. All right. Uh, I have a motion to approve the minutes for February 11, 2021 in council meeting. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Open up to the public. Any comment on any item on the agenda? No comments from the public on the agenda items. Uh, Candace, are you on? You're up for your presentation for the Egg Harbor City Coalition for a Safe Community Update. Candace is having trouble getting on. Come back to her. Katie, do you want to um, do you email real quick to Candace the link? Oh, she's trying to get on? She, she's trying to get on through the website, but she can't get on. Jody, can you send that to her? Uh, I think so. Um, let me text her. Wait for it. We can move. I actually move on. Okay. Right. Yeah, we can wait a couple of okay. minutes. Maybe she gets the email. Okay. 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 She is trying to get on now? Yeah, she can't find it. It's on the I website. I told her it was underneath the census. I'll email it to her. I just done it here. Yeah. Uh, tell her to check and see if she got it. Just refresh that email. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Carl, if you're met, uh, Meg. Carl. Natalia, are you here? Okay, I just admitted Matia and I admitted um, Candace, so they should both be on in a second. Bram. Here. Okay, so, and Candace is on. All right, Candace, are you there? Yes, I am. Sorry for the delay. I had technical difficulty. Uh, no worries. <laughs> so uh, you're up for your uh, Coalition for a Safe Community update. Okay, great. Well, thanks for having me. Short notice. I'll be short and sweet. Um, we want to um, put the greenhouse on the concrete slab that is next to Peace Pilgrim. And we wanted to get council's permission to um, move the three pieces of equipment that is on that cement slab. Um, there's a red long, um, I guess it's a storage container. Uh, a big truck and a trailer. Um, so it's, we wanted just to get your permission and we would pick up the cost, the coalition uh, for any, you know, if we had to uh, rent um, one of those trucks to move uh, it just over off of the cement slab so we can make uh, an area where people can come and sit and it will be inviting uh, before they go into the greenhouse. And the greenhouse will be in the back right hand corner of that cement slab. Um, so we wanna like, you know, make the front area nice for people to come in. So that's, that's what I wanted to ask council tonight um, if we were able to move those items. Where, can you say it again where that was? Where the shed is yeah. and the container. So back, piece yeah, back over here. Oh, back four, here. Four piece <clears throat> where our records are. <laughs> um, anybody on council have any questions or comments for Candace mm -hmm. on this? I have a question. I'm the director of public safety. I have a Mark Emmer. Go ahead, Mark. Um, if we move that Connex box, which she's talking about, and maybe Lisa could help me with this, I don't know if that should be set on the ground. Or that has to be set on concrete. Yeah, on concrete, but it should be. Yeah, Well, we were looking at the other area. Remember, Mark, at the coalition meeting that has the concrete on it. We weren't looking at the grass. 
I mean, yeah, I, I, I know we had the meeting and I'm not real clear on where all I'm saying is I think the Connex box has to stay on cement. If there's other room, that's the trucks can be moved and the the uh, the uh, trailer can be moved easy enough. Them things are easy enough to move, but moving the Connex box might be an issue. And in addition, our clerks and tax records are kept in that other shed, which the police records were in there all right. prior. Prior to that, we have been asking because we are not keeping our records. So maybe with this move, we can come up with a place for, for all, like, we may need concrete. Yeah, we're supposed to be keeping those records in a more efficient manner. Than yeah, we tried to get a container like the police, but we never we were able to denied. Do. And if we move that, that's going to fall apart. And, uh, to be quite honest, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, so maybe if we all go out and see what you're, I, I'm, I'm concerned only because that's where our records are. Of course, mm -hmm. and I totally agree. And Lisa and I had this uh, um, uh, discussion before. Now, I do have a plan. If we have to keep that there, um, I would just make the greenhouse, um, you know, kind of incorporate that. But if we wanted a clean look and if you guys wanted to do something, um, like you said, maybe now's the time to clean up that back area. Um, but we'd be more than, well, you know, if anything has to be inspected, I would love, you know, I would go over there with Keith or whoever wants to go over and we can take a, a more visual look. Um, Cause I'm a more visual person too. Even pictures don't tell the whole story. We would all meet out and just see what you're, what you're saying and where we could move our records. That would be good. What's your time frame? Okay. So, uh, um, Maybe I can meet someone out there and we can, I just wanted to make sure that we were all on the same page and, um, you know, so I can order the greenhouse and, and either way we have a plan if we have to keep it there and if we don't, but I appreciate everyone's teamwork on this effort uh, to clean it up over there and it should be a great project and we put our heads together. We're here tomorrow, Jackie and I both are here tomorrow, so if you could just show them what you're with what's being discussed. Um, like I said, we're game to move it because we're not keeping them the way we should anyway. And we've been asking for a container. A container. So maybe we can all do it together. And Perfect. Yeah, I got some time tomorrow. I'll be over there. What's the, what's the time frame, Candace? Um, I'll be ordering the shed as soon as I got a, you know, a, a approval tonight. Um, it's a 20 by 12. I know I got approval, but I just want to make sure that, that we're on the same page of where we're putting it. And um, it'll be in within two to three weeks. And then installation, um, we spoke to um, police department, the pastors, and we'd like to get it installed by April 15th, that, that week of April 15th. If possible, I mean, we're, you know, we always go with the flow with, with the world right now. So that's, that's, I know it might be tight uh, depending on what kind of things we find out tomorrow when we go look through it. This is uh, Mark again. I'll be at my office uh, all day tomorrow. So if you do come down, Candace, if somebody could just give me a call at the office, I can run over there at any time. And okay. you know, we can look at it together or anybody All right, that's else great. that would like to be there. It was, was there any suggestion on the concrete? Uh, well, when Lisa and I looked at it, there's a blue car uh, parked out back by the dumpsters. Um, I think it was an old car, Lisa, not, like a code car, code enforcement. I don't remember. Uh. So what, what we thought, if we could move it, that we could uh, back it up, uh, it'd be perpendicular facing the other way back by the dumpsters. There's a longer driveway there. Uh, and like Mark said, it, it wouldn't be on grass. It would be more on a, um, asphalt. Uh, but we'd have to take a look with the measurements. That was the only place where we saw that we could move it. You guys... And I'll reach out to Mark when you're out there. All right, perfect. Thanks, guys. Thank you're you. the best. So I want to thank you for the lunch that you provided on Wednesday. Thank you. Oh, you guys are welcome. I'm glad that we can get together and uh, enjoy each other's company and uh, really appreciate um, everybody that does so much work in this town. And um, 
I'm just, we're just fortunate, grateful to um, have you guys all serving together and look forward to a spring one. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, uh, the coalition with Candace spearheaded, uh, she provided lunch for the staff at City Hall on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, yes. And she'll be doing the fire department on March 11th, right, Candace? Yep. Yep, that, that's a nighttime one, but we're game. I, <laughs> seven o'clock if anyone wants to bring um potluck to the fire department and yeah we'll be over and they, the kids made cards it was just a really nice time jack was so happy that the you know everyone appreciated the cards and the yeah middle school is making cards for the fire department too so all right you guys have a nice night like a did she need anything or are we gonna wait till I would, I would say pending. Pending, we we have an agreement to put it out there, but just we're gonna. So, anyone on council in disagreement with this? If not, um, can I have an all in favor of this plan with the greenhouse? Aye. 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 Right, thank you, Candace. Thank you. Thank Candace. you, everyone. Thank you, Keep up the good work. You as well. Mayor, right. you're up. <clears throat> what I what I am about to say is a written response to the false information being circulated by cowardly individuals in effort to once again demonize and discredit me as the mayor. They are using misinformation and lies to scare the public. To be clear, I am not spearheading an incentive to disband the police department. The subject at hand emerged from a manpower study requested by a senior officer in the police department. And I was very concerned that, am, am I, are they muted? I'm gonna mute everyone? Yeah, please. One sec, let me unmute this. You're fine, I can hear these. The manpower study included a shared service component authorized unanimously by city council. This is public record on the February 13th meeting and anyone can access that on the website. I as the mayor and CEO of the city, our organization, am acting under the direction of council as I have for the past eight years. Without a business administrator instituted to save the taxpayers money, it is necessary for me and other people in City Hall to assume administrative functions too numerous to mention and many other jobs and responsibilities too numerous to mention as a service to the citizens. I do this with no added compensation to my yearly stipend as mayor, which is $3,200. Obviously, an administrative function is setting up meetings. This is quite different than spearheading. Let's review the truth, not the half truth, quarter truth. Let's just talk about what we know is the facts. Starting with some history in 2016, after, here, after receiving the Atlantic County Prosecutor's Report, and this also is public record, the OIC of the Police Department and I began a targeted and systematic effort to rebuild the Egg Harbor City Police Department with the purpose of making it a premier law enforcement agency in Atlantic County. We submitted a plan to the prosecutor's office and it was graciously accepted on how we were going to achieve our goals and objectives. Both documents are public record. One major, major priority was to get staffing up to 16 officers. This allows us to also get grants 
for hiring other police officers that are paid for by the safe, safe and secure grant. This includes two SLEO twos. Due to the civil service constraints, turnovers, dropouts from the academy and other factors, this objective was and still remains a daunting task. Nonetheless, presently, we have 15 sworn PTC officers, one targeted to graduate in April, two SLEO twos, two resource officers in each of our schools, and a part-time public safety director. To date, all of the other recommendations by the prosecutor in 2016 have been completed, and this is also public record. In 2020, the council determined that a part-time safety director was necessary to supervise the rank and file in the police department. Since his appointment, Mark Emmer and I have worked together to identify public safety issues that need to be addressed. On January 28th, as I stated, the letter to the Department of Community Affairs to request, was done to request a manpower study. In the letter that is also public record, the officer maintained that the 2006, in 2016, the prosecutor's office was unable to accurately conduct a manpower study and staffing levels remain problematic, to quote. According to the officer, at the time of the letter, the staffing was 12 PTC officers, one full-time SLEO2 officer, two SLEO2 officers that were in the academy at that time, and one civilian administrative assistant. Further, the officer stated in conclusion of the letter, quote, it is my contention that even with the budget allotted at 15 full-time officers, the citizens of Egg Harbor City would not be receiving the policing that they deserve. As an aside, as we've just heard, the projected salary increase for the department for 2021 is $80,257.29. This number includes contractual increases and for the 15 PTC officers. It also includes hiring one new officer. It accounts for the two paying two SLEO2 officers and one part-time public safety director, the equivalent of a four cent tax increase. The response from DCA to that officer was a letter to request for the study be sent by the mayor. At the request of that officer, I obliged and sent a letter to note the DCA routinely provides a shared service component with their manpower studies, and they inquired upon receipt of the letter if the city, given our high tax rate, would want this component added to the study. The request to do such must be made by a resolution of city council. And one was actually provided. And those that voted in the affirmative were Brown, Dash, Heist, Lello, Mays, Ritchie, Sefton, Trithal, and Ross. That resolution authorized me as the mayor to take all necessary, and I'm quoting, take all necessary actions to allow for and support the city of Egg Harbor's participation in this assessment. I did so as directed by the resolution from city council. When the DCA's report on the department's manpower recommendations, along with 
the shared service component from one municipality was disclosed to the council in an executive session, the council chose to take no action. As such, the meeting is not public record at this time and not subject to OPRA request. Moreover, disclosing information dispersed at the meeting is considered a ethics violation. After the meeting, several council members did respond via email that they were interested in seeking out more shared service options other than the one that was presented originally by the DCA. Also public record and in fact was Oprah requested by the PBA and provided to them. To note, neither council nor I ever received a PowerPoint presentation via email or otherwise. Only a financial component of the presentation created by our accountant, and this is also public record, was circulated. The spreadsheet shows a 200 to $230,000 a year savings from years 2022 to 2024, or approximately a 10 to 11 cent tax decrease, if it were to be done. The numbers that were dispersed in the social media or the plan, which were apparently released illegally from the executive session, were what the above projections of the shared service component were based on. However, the number of officers purported in the post accounts for only nine police patrol officers that would have been added to the already exi existing staff of 60 officers in order to provide adequate service. Further, it does not reflect ranking officers or command staff that would be in place 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Neither is that number a fair representation of the total number of officers and various departments that would be at the service of our community based on that study, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If a shared service was agreed upon with this department, then in actuality, e, the A. Carver City would gain almost 70 officers and numerous departments that we could never have. Moreover, critical thinking would dictate that our present officers would have an amazing opportunity for professional growth and promotions that maybe they would never have in a small department like ours. The DCA also guaranteed if the city were to enter into a shared service agreement, all of our officers would have a job. The manpower portion of the study was requested by the senior officer revealed that we need nine police officers to answer calls in the city. The results of the study are just that, results of a study. We can do what we want with them. It does not in any way mandate that we drop our force to nine officers. I personally would never cut our force to nine. It is unrealistic and presents a danger to public safety. Again, with the intent to comply with the council's request, the public safety and I attended a meeting set up by the DCA with Galloway Township, Hamilton and Mullica representatives to present the possibility and feasibility of sharing services with those neighboring communities as requested by city council. There were three chiefs of police one township administrator, one other mayor besides myself, and our public safety director in attendance with two DCA presenters. Again, this was an administrative function that I took on on behalf of the resolution from city council. At that meeting, Mullica Township's mayor expressed an enthusiastic interest in investigating shared services with the city. As such, I set up a meeting with her her chief, her CFO, Scott Trifall, Joe Ritchie, 
the pub and the public safety director, Mark Emmer, and of course me, to further explore that option. The meeting was last night. And again, this was set up by me as an administrative function in compliance with the resolution. Going forward, when all the other options are investigated and considered by the council, the public will be advised of those options in an open public meeting, and they will be encouraged to give their input. There are no lies, there is no deception. Council then will make an educated decision about sharing services. As the mayor, public safety is and always has been my priority. If city council decides not to enter into a shared service agreement, you can be sure that I will strive to adequately staff the police department with the goal of obtaining 16 officers, as was my plan from the beginning. And to give the officers the tools they need to do their job, as I have always done over the past eight years. Contrary to the slanderous accusations that were leveled against me in the last election, I have never cut the police budget, nor have I sought to defund the police department, and no money ever disappeared out of the budget. Jody, would you agree to that? Do you recall any money disappearing out of the budget? No. Thank you. In fact, I increased spending by allocating appropriations properly where they were needed. Never were the police ever denied a request for anything. Further, any money left in the yearly budget that was appropriated by the council went to buy equipment, cars, software, programs, and to make improvements in the station. I have always supported the police department and anyone who denies this or suggests otherwise is an outright liar. This new hate site started by revenge seeking cowards in the latest attempt to once again, degrade me and make the public think that I am a cop hater. Progress made from where we were in 2012 and where we are now is outstanding and quantifiable and verifiable. Progress thus far includes all 26 mandated ACOP, that's Atlantic County Prosecutor's Office, to improve police op operations were completed. <clears throat> the rules and the regulations and the manual and SOPs were all, pre all updated, it included a bulletproof vest wear policy, random drug testing in the police department, critical incident policy, and active shooter policy. Drills are now held at three schools. Performance evaluations were implemented each year with a, a professional development component, meaning our officers receive the training that they need to do their jobs, which they never had before, did before. And a, Employee recognition program was started. We established a new officer training requirements, mandated an FTO program for new police officers, certified EHC officers to complete yearly trainings and recertify their fellow officers, established a yearly training schedule, trained in armor for the station, updated the weapons inventory, revived two SLEO2 positions, added two school resource source officers, increased the staff and rank to fit now 15 full-time employees, one is in the um, academy, two part-time SLEO2s, two class three officers, one at each of the schools, promoted four sergeants, one lieutenant, and a de detective now that we have, one administrative assistant, which in 2017 and 2019, and a part-time public safety director in 2020. Updated the department. Break room, sergeant's office, bulletproof glass in the entrance, secure entry to the PD, upgraded jail and evidence room, detective, well, I don't know about that. It was a detective office, public safety director's office, 
uh, and we also updated the fleet and computer system, decaled three chargers, purchased three new SUVs, one used Crown Vic, painted and decaled the Crown Vic and Durango's, updated the computers and vehicles and station, added software and programs like Guardian Tracking, Aladtech, Pro Phoenix, purchased AEDs for the vehicles, established and equipped a bike patrol unit, purchased body cameras with grant funding, installed cameras that officers can access from their cell phones on Philadelphia Avenue, increased accountability and communication with the PD among council. In addition to stats, the following reports are regularly generated to city council. Overtime justification, overtime dollars used per pay, event costs report, weekly crime report, cash flow analysis, that to stay on budget. A representative from the PD is required to report out to city council at all public meetings. The coalition, we, we started the coalition for a safe community in Egg Harbor City to help the officers establish neighborhood watch, brought the Atlanta County Sheriff's Office for additional patrols that happened in 2016, along with now in 2020, brought the Hope One program to the city. As taxpayers, you know that the cost to operate, maintain, and upgrade not only a police department, but additionally three schools and city service services are significant for a small town like ours. Without shared service options, it is inevitable that taxes will increase each year. Shared services are an option, as another option could be developing a strategic initiative for targeted growth and redevelopment in designated areas permitted by Pinelands, the Pinelands Commission. But that option will come at a cost that many leaders are not willing to pay. The budget forecast for 2021, without adding any unrenewable revenue or cutting services, stands at approximately 12 cents, Jody, did we say? 13 cents almost? Per $100 of assessed value. The increase is mainly due to the same culprits, loss or decrease of revenues, contractual increases, increase in the cost of benefits and pension contributions, and increased cost of services. In fact, we just discussed that our solid waste removal is $25,000 more than it was last year. That's over one penny to the tax rate. They are not due to increased and frivolous spending as formal council leadership majority was erroneously accused of. Taxes continue to rise under the new majority also. As a council and as a community, we need to explore better and more efficient ways to deliver services and keep taxes stable. This will never be possible if initiatives such as shared services are publicly executed on social media using lies, hatred, disrespect, and slanderous accusations from cowards who hide behind a Facebook page. This shared study was just that, a study. Council votes on what the, the police department looks like, not me. They can take it or they can leave it. In closing, I would like to invite those individuals named or not who continuously perpetrate hate speech and lies against me, the city, and its officials on various social media platforms to instead put their time and effort into doing more productive and positive things that will attract businesses and people to our great city. It is incredibly sad that those individuals are so unhappy and so miserable that they must just consistently tear others down to get satisfaction in life. Why not just become a part of a proactive solution to our problems? Finally, I would caution the unnamed coward and creator of the latest hater page to reconsider using the holy scriptures erroneously to deceive the public. That, in my opinion, is despicable. Good job, man.
I just wanted to bring to everyone's attention, and let, I don't know if this uh, public safety director was going to. We did receive the junk driving <clears throat> enforcement fund grant for seven thousand four hundred forty dollars. I believe that the lieutenant applied for that grant, so thank you. We also have interest in the St. Nick's property. Um, Brian, um, are you going to talk about that in your report? Uh, yeah, I can. Uh -huh. What's that? Okay. <laughs> so Ryan will talk a little bit more about that in his report. Um, and just again, I thank the coalition for the delicious lunch and they will be having another meeting on March 15th. Also, um, I ran into Pastor Bruce from the um, Rotary Club on Wednesday, and he wanted to um, get council's approval. Uh, he's been working with Donna to buy equipment for the Rotary Park in memory of John Sen. And he has decided, they together decided on two swing sets. One is for handicapped children and one is for others of different ages. And he wanted council's approval to purchase that equipment so he can start fundraising. Which is a motion. motion. All right, can have a motion? All right, second. Second. Aye. All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council Committee Chair reports. Um, I'll start with finance. So the Teamsters have submitted to open contract negotiations. First meeting will happen within a week or two. Um, a labor attorney will be the point of contact through those negotiations. Um, Councilman Trithall did not communicate if there was anything for safety, so we'll pass over that. Uh, Councilwoman Heist uh, for highway and property, uh, nothing there. Utility, uh, Councilman Wright. No. All right. Code, Councilman Dash. Uh, we'll be setting up a, a code enforcement meeting um, on March 10th at 7 p.m. I'll send out an email. And then I'll also get the dates for the rest of the meetings for the rest of the year. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, again, Councilman Trithel with licenses and ordinances. Uh, I know he's been in conversation about setting up a meeting for that, so uh, eventually. Uh, Land Use Board, Councilman Timbers. Here. Can you hear me? Yes. Anything to report on land use? Um, N nothing to report at this time. Uh, I, I will have something at the next meeting. All right, thank you. Just so you know, you are a little muffled. Uh, uh, school board, council, councilwoman Brown. Yes, I have. A, I have a question about that. So, I haven't received any links for any school board meetings in months. And when I tried to address it at the reorg meeting. Um, I was basically shut down, which I didn't really appreciate because it only takes a couple seconds to send a link. And I still, I, I haven't been able to attend a school board meeting since the beginning of the year. Okay. So uh, that's a problem. So I have not received that. Yeah. So Meg says she hasn't received any notice of any meetings and I know they usually come from her. Um, I don't know if we can make communication with the school board. I'll reach out. All right. Meg's going to reach out. Uh, Councilwoman Brown mm -hmm. on that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, anything for Jeff? Okay. No, nothing. And Councilman Timbers, Aaron Hafen. Uh, nothing to report on the on the uh, Aaron Hafen meeting. Thank you, sir. Uh, Director Emmer, your public safety report, please. Yes, sir. I do not have a statistical report uh, for pay period number four. I was given it by uh, Lieutenant Hutton, and I seem to have misplaced the paperwork on that. So I'll be able to bring you up to speed on that at the next meeting. However, what I would like to read to council is the police department received a letter from uh, Joellen Arndt, whose uh, husband, Bob Arndt, a retired New Jersey state trooper, passed away 
on February 2nd, 2021 at their home on 435 Washington Avenue. Mrs. Arndt sent the following letter. Dear Officer Carpo, just wanted to tell you how much I admired your behavior on the night of my husband's death on February 2nd, 2021. You stayed until his body was transported to Wimberg. You answered any questions I asked and you were a comfort. I'm sick of hearing about bad police officers when there are so many good officers like you around. Thank you again. You are a credit to your family and to the A. Carver City Police Department. Sincerely, Joyce Joel and Arndt, 435 Washington Avenue, A. Carver City, New Jersey. Uh, I mean, I think uh, Officer Carpo, uh, like our other officers, are a credit to the department. And uh, I think this is a perfect example of, you know, what our officers do above and beyond the call of duty every day. Job well done to Officer Carpo. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director. Uh, on behalf of Council, please send out a, a gracious thank you to Officer Carpo, please. And on behalf of the Mayor, also. Um, Jody, CFO report? Um, nothing tonight, thank you. Okay. Meg, City Clerk? Uh, I just want to make mention, uh, it, we do have some time, but we are, we did schedule a rabies clinic for March 27th uh, from 10 to 12 at the highway garage. We will be doing things a little different. We're still working out the details, but due to social distancing and um, the COVID-19, we'll, we always did handle it a little like we tried to keep any, the dogs apart anyway, or animals, you know, they can get all crazy, but um, we're trying to put in some more and we're working out the details, but it is at the highway garage. We're working closely with Keith and the staff that he will have out there helping us that day. But I just want everybody to mark it. We do, we are gonna have the rabies clinic. Um, I do think that's why some of our numbers were down last year for licensing because we did not have the rabies clinic and we typically do get some, that encourages people to come out, get the shot, register the dog or uh, they just know we're out there so they come out. So um, like I said, we will be putting advertisements out there and we usually start in the beginning of March and, and put signs around town, but the, it will be March 27, 10 to 12 at the highway garage. I will, like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll bring it up again at the next meeting. Absolutely, thank you. So, uh, <clears throat> so Keith, thank you also. Uh, Angela, your city attorney report. Thank you, Councilman. I just want to update everyone on the properties that George Frick is selling for the city. So as of today, we have four properties sold. Two, as you know, close and Jody mentioned it in her budget on January 7th. They each sold for 20,000. We collected something in the area of 38 or 39,000 for both. That was 401, 407 Boston and 449 Cincinnati. On December 17th, we closed on 2101, 2103 Philadelphia for 21,000. And then 1441 St. Louis will close, I believe, sometime next week or the week after, and that was for $15,000. we are still working on a price and sale for uh, 450 Philadelphia Avenue, and that should be somewhere um, in between $35,000 and $40,000. So we're moving along pretty well. There's only two properties that we haven't really had anything on. That was one Whitehorse Pike, where the minimum bid was 35,000 and 1514, 1524 Whitehorse Pike, where the minimum bid was 50,000. I asked George to follow up with me on those two properties, but we're making good progress on all of the seven properties, which should bring in some decent money for the city and perhaps um, be put in the budget. Finally, on March 11th, I want to remind the mayor and the council that there will be a public hearing on the ordinance for the municipal consent for the water plant and also the resolution um, on the water plant. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Ryan, your engineer's report. Sure. Uh, first with the agenda item, um, <clears throat> we have one here, authorization to submit uh, what's commonly referred to as a discretionary aid application. 
That is for resurfacing um, Chicago Avenue, the three and four hundred blocks. Or our members, the road started to fall apart right as the contract went to pave it. So we had to cut it back open and stabilize a bunch of areas. Um, it's had some time to sit, seems to be holding up pretty well. Uh, so at this point, we tend to go back in and, and profile, mill, and overlay. Uh, we've had discussions with DOT about how to fund that. Um, so this program allows you to ask for additional money. Um, they encourage us to apply and are hopefully they can fund it this way. Um, if not, they're going to look back to the municipal aid program and, and maybe borrow from a future year or find, find another way to fund it. Um, but either way, you know, the city won't have to fund it out of their budget. Um, the solar developer, we've been sort of exchanging back and forth. We got their proposal to do a remote net metering site and it covered less than half of the parking lot uh, out of the transit hub area. So I reached back out. Um, uh, Ms. Ms. Galloway brought up at the previous meeting about you know, doing a community solar at that site. So I, I floated the idea of them of combining, uh, doing a single project where we would do both on the same site. Um, having that single site, you know, the larger you can get, the better economy of scale you have. So I'm hoping to talk with them. We have a meeting tomorrow at uh, 3.30 to talk through that. Uh, the outdoor advertising sign, this one's sort of been hanging around for a while. Um, DOT didn't get back to us for five months. And when they did, they denied us um, based on Pinelands rules. But they didn't look at the city ordinance and that the Pinelands approves the city's ordinance. So uh, we appealed their initial decision. We have a hearing scheduled for March 2nd at 1 p.m. Um, I'm anticipating that they're going to reverse their decision and grant us this would be for the advertising sign up next to uh, what used to be Leatherheads at the, the corner park there. And that would be funded through the NPP program we're working with Phil trying to get that advanced. Um, and then something that, that Lisa brought up in her report, uh, there is currently a developer under contract for the old St. Nick School. Uh, they reached out to the city and are going to be meeting with the redevelopment committee probably sooner than later. Um, we would need to craft a redevelopment plan to the middle of the residential zone. Um, I believe they're proposing to utilize the current facility. They would convert it into an adult take care and education facility. Uh, they operate another one of these facilities uh, elsewhere locally. So it would be, um, you know, it'd be nice to have that building back occupied, certainly. But anything that they would propose that would resemble that would obviously not fit in the residential use in that zone. What's it going to be again, Ryan? Adult daycare? Yeah, adult daycare and education facility is what they, the letter received says, my client has operated an adult daycare and education facility on Route 30 in Hamilton for approximately 20 years. So, you know, it's not somebody who's trying to start something off from scratch. It's somebody who's been doing I'll, this. I was never across the street, so that's one of the things. Oh, okay. See yeah. what's going on. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Um, so, but again, that's not something that would be a permitted use. So they'll have to come in, meet with the redevelopment committee. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk it over, make sure it's a good fit for the city. Uh, and then we'd have to craft a redevelopment plan that, you know, specifically address their use and what they would and would not be allowed to do there. Mm -hmm. So, um, I expect that that's in the next couple of weeks. That's, that's really it. Unless somebody has any questions or anything from you. Council, have any questions for our engineer? Yeah, uh, Ryan, I, I have a quick question. The, sure. uh, the repaving of the. The Chicago Avenue 400 and 300 block yes. that that re the repairs done to the work they did that's not paid by the contractor so the work that they did they're, they're going to end up having to do at some discount but no it's it's not paid by the contractor in that it, it's not really their fault that that there was clay underneath the road some of the things that they did we, we believe kind of contributed to um as much uh, as, as, as things developed uh, I don't think it quite have been, would have been quite as bad had they not proceeded in the way that they did. So we are going back to them for that. Uh, but the first step is securing additional funding. You know, the, the asphalt uh, material itself is, is quite expensive. So that's that's really what we're, we're trying to fund. It's, you know, partially their fault, but certainly not 100%. Um, so that's that's what we'll be working through, you know, depending on what we get back from DOT. So will, will, they, be getting, will they be making additional money doing this repair? They'll be getting additional compensation for doing the work, um, whether it's at cost or they make additional profit. That's something that we need to meet with them to discuss. We don't anticipate them, you know. It, let's put it this way: they're not going to get this as a, as a large money maker for the company. Yeah, because it was—it's a terrible job they did. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. Some of the, some of the why it came out is was underlying conditions under the road. Um, there is rather obviously clay underneath the roadbed down, you know, a foot or two. I, I have a picture of a, a loaded triaxle that had asphalt in it stuck up to its axle. 
So it's sunk into the ground a solid 18 plus inches. So right. none of the work that they were doing would have impacted any material at that depth. So, you know, we can't just say, oh, it's all your fault. Everything you did fell apart. You know, material right. well, what they were working on. Clearly but areas, areas that didn't collapse in are, mm -hmm. aren't level. If, uh, yeah. if, you go, if you go by when it's raining, there's yeah. a good four feet of uh, puddles in the, in the, um, along the curb line. They, it extends past people's cars. You need to have rain boots on just to get into your vehicle. I agree. We've been out there after the rain. We've taken a bunch of pictures. Um, that's, that's part of why I feel we're you know, well situated for the uh, funding application. Okay. Um, the plan would be to go in and profile mill along the curb line. Because you can't just lay more asphalt on top because it won't line up with people's driveways and roof drains and stuff like that. Sure. So you set the milling machine to about an inch and a half at the curb line, and you fade it out to about zero at the left edge. The milling machine is about seven or eight feet wide, depending which one you have. So you would profile mill there, and then build the crown. That allows you to build the crown back up. When you would overlay it, it's now lower at the gutters and higher towards the middle. So that allows us to reestablish the crown in the road, get it to drain towards the curbs, and then to the inlets where it needs to go. Right. Yeah. Cause, cause currently it doesn't even drain to the inlet. Yeah. They, they had the entire road shaped and when it started to fall apart and get rutted, they had to run a roller out in front of it. And when you're running a roller without a grader, you just lose it. So they, they I got gotcha. you. Tried to get it as flat as they could. And unfortunately in some areas it, it sort of bellied the other way. I mean, it, they, at some points it was trying to like trying to pay a water bit as they were pushing on it, just pushing up elsewhere. So I got gotcha. you. I understand. Thank you. Of course. All right. Any other questions for uh, Ryan? If not, we'll move into the resolution he just spoke of. Uh, approval to submit a grant application and execute a grant grant contract with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the resurfacing of Chicago Avenue, both the 300 and 400 blocks project. If there's no questions or comments or concerns, may I have a motion? So moved, Dash. Second, Brown. Uh, roll call, please. Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Captain? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Wright? Yes. Richie? Yes. Number 16, resolution to approve the final design authorization and agreement modification number one with NJDOT for Cedar Creek Egg Harbor Lake Pedestrian Connection Transportation Alternatives project. This is the city desires to approve the final design authorization and sign an agreement modification number one with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the Cedar Creek Egg Harbor Lake pedestrian connection. Uh, if there's no questions, comments, or concerns, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Graham? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Dash? Yes. yes. Timber? Yes. Right? Yes. Richie? Yes. <clears throat> Number 17, resolution award engineering final design contract to CMT Associates. Uh, this is New Jersey Transportation has approved CME's proposal for final design engineering services in the amount of $225,000. $221.43. The final design engineering services contract to be awarded to CME Associates as part of the design systems program. If there's no questions, comments, or concerns, I have a motion. Second. Right, <laughs> Septon? Yes. Roll call, please. Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Captain? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Wright? Yes. Richie? Yes. 18 resolution authorizing a tax sale assignment 249 9th Terrace, $11,300. Uh, a gentleman has presented an offer to purchase by assignment two certificates of sale 18 00079 and 19-00097, which were issued by Egg Harbor City at tax sales held on 12-18-18 and 12-17-19.
known as 249 North Terrace, in the amount of $11,300 for both liens. If there's no questions, comments, or concerns, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. <laughs> I'll second it. <laughs> Roll call. Brown. Yes. Clark. Yes. Cash. Yes. Sefton. Yes. Timbers. Yes. Wright. Yes. Richie. Yes. All right. Uh, number 19. Public hearing. Ordinance number 3-2021. Update the master plan. Special emergency. May I have a motion to op open to public hearing? So moved, Brown. Second, Clark. All right. Anybody in the public have any questions or comments on this? Yeah, could you explain it to us? What the funds are directed for? May I ask your name and your address, please, sir? Anthony DeGrosso, 409 St. Louis Avenue. Thank you. I've seen it on the agenda, but I don't see any um, explanation of it. Sure. So the state of New Jersey requires you to have a master plan to have zoning be effective in your city. Um, the master plan used to be, had to be renewed or re-examined every seven years. Now it's every 10 years. Um, you're into the 11th year now uh, since your last master plan was adopted. So you have to do re-examination or else your zoning is no longer presumed. So if someone challenges you in court, it's gonna be you know, more, more difficult to fight. So you update your master plan, you look back at the previous master plan, look at your goals, your objectives, what things uh, you were trying to accomplish, what things have changed. Um, and you just update sort of looking forward um, you know, it's a document that covers a, a wide uh, amount of things in the city, but really the, the focus is for land use. And so. so is this an update or a totally new um, evaluation plan? This, this is a re-examination. I, I believe our proposal was for 20,000. The last full rewrite of the master plan was, uh, I believe, $100,000, and that was 11 years ago. So this is, you know, obviously much less in scope than that was. For, for the land? I mean, this is something that you, that we knew that was going to take place at this time and we didn't put anything towards it. So well, you, you can okay. fund it over five years. So we're, we're just authorizing it with this ordinance. We're not mm -hmm. paying for the whole thing right now. You fund it over five years. I think that was a special emergency. I'm wondering. Uh -oh. I, I think the, the special emergency term is really a more of a, a funding mechanism anything else or am I correct there yes. Jody mm -hmm. yeah so that that speaks to the funding mechanism not the situation okay thank you no hello Marianne Rogers 606 Philadelphia who is responsible for implementing this plan the master plan yes the master plan is a guiding document for the city um, like I said it, it covers a wide range of topics there's no one that's solely responsible for implementation, but as people are moving forward, um, as you're reviewing zoning applications, you're supposed to look back to the master plan and, and what was the vision of the city. Um, the, the place where it's most useful, frankly, is at the zoning board. When someone comes in and is deviating from the zoning that is um, you know, covering the, the lot that they're working on, they're asking to do something else. So you look back to the intent of the master plan and say, well, what were we trying to do here? What were we trying to accomplish? And does this further the intent of the master plan, even if it doesn't fit with the zoning that is crafted for this area? So that's that's really where the rubber meets the road. There are many other things um, for energy efficiency, for environmental, for recreational improvements. And, and again, it's, it's really a guiding document um, that the, the, the board and the city use, you know, multiple departments, not, again, not a single individual, look back to and, and refer to as, you know, what are the goals of the city? Okay, but who is, who's got the input into the master plan? So generally when you do a master plan, you hold public hearings, sometimes there's a steering committee, a lot of times you meet with various committees, um, subcommittees of city council. Um, I, I was part of one we did in, in Margate. We had a steering committee with businesses. So that's, that's pretty typical. Um, so it, it, you know, it, it really is, is a bot. It's a, a document of the planning board in, in this case, the land use board in Lake Harbor city. Um, so we'll work with them and, and sort of take some direction from them. Um, but generally speaking, you know, it is 
there's uh, public meetings that are, are held uh, to, to try to gather people's and businesses' input. Um, it's, again, it's a pretty broad document, so you want input from a lot of different people um, with, with different views and, and different objectives, frankly. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kim Hesse, New Orleans Avenue. I do have a question regarding this. Um, you said that it's a planning board as well as the council that are going to be um, having their input on this and, and the citizens. I'm wondering, you said you may, may or is there a, a committee that you're going to elect for this? <clears throat> so it is a document of the planning board. Ultimately, the board has to adopt it and then they send it to city council um, to sort of guide city council on what the proposed zoning, and there's proposed zoning changes and things like that in this document. Um, we'll, we'll be working with members of the planning board and generally members of city council, um, whether they decide to sort of jointly form a committee, it, it's done different ways in different places. Um, you know, we'll see how the planning board wants to proceed and we'll, we'll go from there. Do you know how they did it previously? Um, I, I am not familiar. We did not do the last master plan. So I, I personally was not involved with the, the process. I believe that Mr. Mickle, uh, who did do the last plan, held a, a large number of public meetings and met with business owners. Um, I'm, I'm not familiar with how he constructed the steering committee. Do you have any idea whether they may continue with the um, transient village or any of the things that were on the, the previous master plan? So those are the types of things that we look at is, you know, lots of change between then and now. Yes. Um, what, what the recommendations will be coming out, I, I could not tell you at this time. It's, it's obviously way too premature for that. Um, but that's something we will definitely look at um, and, and scrutinize and figure out if that is the best path forward, if, um, you know, it needs to be substantially revised or tweaked or, you know, we'll, we'll see where, uh, where the board wants to go with it. And finally, the main thing with this is, I figure, I feel that Egg Harbor City really needs some kind of a, this is where we could go right or wrong with Egg Harbor City. I think we need a draw for Egg Harbor City. And I think with our plan, I mean, so many things from the previous plan, you have, have been fulfilled at this point, but I feel like there needs to be some reason for people to come to Egg Harbor City. And I think this is where we need to not fail Egg Harbor City. Thank you, yeah. that's all I have to say. Well said. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? All right, uh, motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion. Second. Second. All right, to adopt the ordinance. Uh, if there's no questions, comments from council on this, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Have a second, please. Roll call. Brown. Yes. Clark. Yes. Dash. Yes. Sefton. Yes. Timbers. Yes. Wright. Yes. Richie. Yes. All right. Can I have a motion to advertise the notice of adoption in the Hamilton Gazette on March 3rd, so, 2021? Second. So moved, Dash. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number 20, resolution, special emergency resolution, master plan update. Uh, it's pretty much what we just discussed, correct? Do you want to explain it? Yeah, um, could we just do a resolution. It has to be sent to the state, and it just allows us to, um, if, you, if you borrow notes against it in the future, it just allows for that to, um, for that mechanism. And, and um, like our CFO did say, it is paid uh, one fifth over the total amount each year, correct? Yeah. So it's ten thousand a year, not a full fifty thousand dollars. All right. If there's no questions or comments or concerns, can I have a motion. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Brown. Yes. Clark. Yes. Dash. Yes. Captain. Yes. Timbers. Yes. Wright. Yes. Richie. Yes. Bill list. Any questions on the bill list? If there are none, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second, please. I second. Roll call. Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. 
Dash? Yes. Stephen? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Yes. Richie? Yes. All right, number 22, Bear, you're up for any comments? Additional? Um, no, I don't have any more comments. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Council, uh, Councilwoman Sefton, any comments? Yes, I do. I'd like to thank uh, Keith Adams. There was a problem with the sewer uh, behind my house, and he and the crew came out and uh, worked all day yesterday, and I just want to thank all of them again. I appreciate it. Thanks, Keith, for taking care of that. Uh, Councilwoman Brown. Yes, I, I, I have a couple things to say. Um, my first, the first thing that I want to say that I want known to the public is I don't know where this misinformation is coming from, but if you're going to attack people, at least do your homework first and know what you're talking about. That's number one. I've never, ever not backed our police department. During the summertime, my 16-year-old son and his friends were assaulted by two grown men at the Wawa. If it was not for our police officers being right around the corner, the gentlemen were trying to run them over with a car. Furthermore, this weekend in front of my house, someone broke into my car and stole over $700 worth of things. I was able to go to the police department and have confidence with knowing the officers and having interactions with them in the public to know that they're going to do their job. So I just want to let the public understand that there's a lot of misinformation out there. And if you want to attack people, just do your homework first. And you might understand better and you might have a different view. And, you know, that's kind of it. That's all. That's all you have? Yes, that's all. Thank you. Councilman Dash. Councilman Dash. Sorry, I was muted. No, nothing for tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Councilman Timbers. Hi, right, thank you. Uh, if, if possible, I just wanted to kind of rewind back to uh, the comments for the, uh, the um, Municipal Land Use Board. Um, I went back through my notes. There, there were two presentations. I just want to let you know that uh, Ryan McGowan, he did give a presentation on uh, group homes. And it was uh, it was really enlightening. He um, let us know the differences between uh, Class F sober living facilities and the Oxford uh, model homes, and what type of um, approaches uh, the city of Egg Harbor might look look at in the future for, for um, issues in, involving these uh, properties. Uh, there was also a presentation by uh, Ms. Galloway uh, about possibly adding protection for trees in our master plan. Since we just discussed it, it is something that she uh, she brought up and it, it does sound like a very important issue. And that, that's it. Thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Wright. Oh uh, yeah, just a couple of things. Um, just to let the public know that uh, we do got a couple uh, important events coming up uh, as I was talking at last meeting. Uh, flag football, we will be starting the signups March 9th, March 10th. March 16th, March 17th, 6 to 7 p.m. Flyers on the Egg Harbor City Crusaders page. Also, T-ball signups will be uh, starting those same dates. That will be a $30 registration, three to six-year-olds. 90% um, of you people have my phone number. Just give me a call. Or, like I said, like Egg Harbor City Crusaders, and uh, the uh, flyer will be up there. They'll also be around town also. Also, um, the Crusaders probably will be having another Easter egg hunt at the Crusaders field. Um, time and dates are be, to be determined. Um, so once that information gets out, we will also let you know about that also. So uh, that's pretty much it for right now. Thank you, sir. Yep. Uh, Councilwoman Clark. Uh, yes, uh, just. Oh, you muted yourself. I, I, got, I got cut off. Hold <laughs> this way. I'm like jumping from screen to screen. All right, um, just real quick, uh, the at Harbor City School, um, I, have, I have kids in the school right now um, and they're conducting a survey 
for parents if they haven't seen anything yet. Um, it's regarding the in-person instruction and remote learning. Um, and the survey closes on March 3rd. So if uh, anyone here has children within the school district, um, please uh, visit the school website to uh, fill in the, uh, the survey. Ingrid, you could get that put on Instagram too, if you want to. Um, if you want to email me the information, I can get it on the Instagram page. A lot of the younger uh, families do look at it. Okay, I'll email that to you. Is that everything? Yep, that's all, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, I have one thing. It was brought to my attention that Mr. Costa wants the council's viewpoint on holding the Food Truck Festival to share. So uh, I'd like to open that up for discussion for anybody who has any insight or comments or concerns. Anybody? I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I, I didn't get to enjoy the last one, but I heard it was hot as heck. I mean, hopefully we get a better date. Or a little cooler night. Yeah, I think, I think they're pretty set on the August date. Right. Because other towns have the I got it. Well, maybe we'll catch that break and it'll be a cooler night. But that, that seemed like that was the only downfall was it was yeah. extremely hot or something. <laughs> All right. So um, other than that, is everybody on council in uh, full green that we would like to see it come back? in 2021 and we'll support Mr. Costa with it and his team. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, yes. All right. Absolutely. All right, Mayor, if you can let him know. Uh, other than that, I have nothing else at this time. I have a motion to open it up to public comment. Make a motion. So moved, Brown. Second. Second. Uh, for public comment. Anybody out there that would like to speak? Yeah, I have a quick question. Uh, previously, the city council was in discussion about the tower site with the brain trauma unit yeah. out there. Did that go away? Is that still in the works? Sure, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, if you can state your name and your address, we'd appreciate Anthony, it. Anthony DeGrosso, 409 St. Louis Avenue. And uh, I'll turn that question over to our engineer. So the original developer, the, the TBI Institute, um, they apparently found another site and are moving in a different direction. We granted a conditional redevelopers agreement to a group uh, that calls themselves Energyme University. Um, they have an aquaculture um, business model that they're, they're working through. We gave them about 90 days, uh, plus or minus, well, plus a couple, to get some more detailed information related to the site, to get us a concept plan, to get us a business plan, um, so that we could bring that back, sit down with the redevelopment committee and have a more educated discussion um, about whether we wanted to move forward with them uh, or not. So we're, we're just sort of waiting to get some things back from them and uh, we'll, we'll see what comes out of it. But they are currently designated as the conditional redevelopment. Like. <clears throat> you, you want me to say something? You can. You can. I, I, I'd like to address you know, the mayor's um, prepared statement and Mrs. Brown's statement about the A. Corpus City Police Department. You know, I've, I've heard I listened to the statement. I don't do social media, so I don't know what you're referring to. Um, but I didn't, he I didn't hear anybody say that, no, the city is not suggesting that we outsource the police department. Or is this being actually being considered? I'm sorry, am I muted? No, are you, is this the same individual as this, Anthony? Yes. Is it being considered? Yes, there have been meetings, as the mayor stated um, earlier today, with Kamala. I, I mean, so so this decision is just based on city council and the mayor. This is such an important decision to the community here. We've lost so much business in just in Lake mm -hmm. Harbor City in general. This should be a ballot item for the the residents and the voters of Lake Harbor City. This is a, a dramatic change to the city. I don't think that this justifies city council to do this or the mayor the mayor doesn't do it anthony okay i mean look there's some input there, there, there whether it's behind the scenes or not there has to be some type of input some discussions obviously we've attended meetings so even though you may not vote on it there is some kind of input i think that if you do ever consider stuff like this that you you, you, you owe it to the people of Egg Harbor City to let them vote on something that's just so drastic 
that's going to affect them in their day-to-day -day life. This is Councilwoman Brown. I just want to respond by saying nothing was definitive. It was supposed to be an executive session with council to just discuss what was discovered. It was never said that we were going to do anything. It was simply a meeting. We do a lot of meetings about a lot of different things. That does not mean we're going to enter into agreements for those things. We were just exploring. We, nobody sat down and said, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. We're not there yet. We were simply exploring options. That's it. OK, I, I understand that. But I would go back to my other comment that if you did consider doing something like this, I don't think that this is something that you can just leave in the hands of city council. I think the taxpayers of the community have the right to vote on something this important. Anthony, if this was to ever come to fruition, there would absolutely be public hearing meetings, public meetings, not even so much public hearing meetings, just public meetings invite the public into <laughs> Um, talk with us on the matter at hand and to get their input. A as Councilwoman Brown said, it was it was strictly, not strictly loosely, a, a investigation type kind of thing. Nothing set us doing. There was a meeting with Mullica, and that's as far as it went. Um, as far as the random question on the election, it, it does not have to be one. Um, could we explore it? Absolutely, but it does not have to be one. But if, again, if it was to ever come to fruition, Absolutely, the residents of this town will be invited into this meeting to voice their opinion and hear what would be at hand. No, I, I clearly understand that it doesn't have to go to election of the people in the community. And the city council ultimately has the responsibility to do it. But the right thing to do would be to ask the people of the community their opinion. Besides a public hearing, which nobody attends, you know, except for us people here. What have we got, 49 people you know, in the community? That, and some people don't maybe not be able to get on here or even come to City Hall. It's, I just don't think that City Council should make a decision this big for the community. Um, my name is Marcella Elwin. I live on London Avenue here in Egg Harbor City. I also work for the city. Um, <clears throat> to piggyback on what Mr. DeGrosa is saying, I think that with a decision this large, you know, there were meetings held that council was not involved in. No sworn law enforcement officers were involved in any of that. And I think that that is one of the things that there doesn't seem to be any transparency. Um, I'll put it out there. We at the police department are scared. We hear things because there are meetings with other police officers, other police chiefs, other departments. We hear stuff that we're on, that seven of us or eight of us are going to lose our jobs. You know, and we're not hearing anything from our elected officials or from anybody saying anything differently until now, until there's something on Facebook that, you know, causes 49 people to be at a council meeting. There are not 49 people don't show up to council meetings regularly. So, you know, this is this is all this is this is big stuff. And I, and I agree. And I think it's, it's, it's actually gone farther than, than we probably even know. Honestly, sir, it has not. I can tell you that honestly, it has not gone any further than what has been said tonight. And, and actually, can, can you imagine the response time if we have to have a cop from Galloway come out here? That's ridiculous. You know, every time that I've ever had to use the municipal services here of the police department, they were always there for me. They were always courteous. They always took care of the problem. You know, now we're going to have somebody from a different township that basically doesn't care. You know, they're responding to a call. They have no skin in the game, except for they have to follow the law. It's just not fair to the people of the community. It's not. Regardless of my taxes going down or not, it's not fair. Understood, sir. We, and we hear your concerns. We absolutely hear your concerns. Thank you. Hello, Marianne Rogers, 606 Philadelphia. I know we changed our dispatch to Mays Landing and I live on Philadelphia Avenue. I had to call maybe once or twice and they didn't know where my residence was. I have no problem in doing studies. I think studies to see if we can save money is great. I also think that protecting our police officers and maybe even getting more, even if it's a couple cents on our taxes, 
is something that we should look into and not outsourcing because maybe there are more problems in other police departments that we may not be aware of. Absolutely. Thank you. Anybody else from the public with any comments? Sandra Perna, 601 Cincinnati Avenue. I just wanted to just comment back on Mr. DeGrosa that I do think a vote um, should be the situation if it was to, um, to do the shared services for the police department. I, I would think the citizens do need to um, have a voice and you know they don't always go up to city council meetings um, I'm, I, I can attest to myself, I, I don't. And, you know, that's, that's important and, and our safety in our town is important. So I just, that's what I wanted to say. Anybody else from the public? There's nobody else in the public that has anything to say? The only thing that I want to say, uh, this is Kim Hess from New Orleans Avenue. I just want to say, I don't feel that there's, there should be a problem just seeing what our options are, that's all. And I mean, I understand everybody's concerns. I mean, I definitely want to feel safe as well. And, you know, at my home as well and in the town. Um, so I understand both sides. I don't think there's any harm in finding out you know, seeing the studies. Thank you. Anyone else from the public with any comments? Can I say something? Sure. I mean, I don't know if it's against the rules or whatever, but I just want to let the public know that council would never, ever get my vote to be sure of service. Just to let you know. Because when you deal with the youth, I mean, last year, we had almost 100 kid brawl. By the time Galloway, Maze Landon, or whoever were to get there, it would have escalated to a hell of a lot worse than it was. So just to let you know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, one last call to the public for any further comments. This is this is Councilman Dash, if I could just say something. Sure. Just, to put, just to put the residents' uh, mind a little bit at ease, um, just because this was presented to us doesn't mean that many of us are, are in favor of this. Um, we're learning about some of the stuff, you know, relatively recently as well. Um, there's a lot of us that, that are not interested in shared services with the police department. Um, we're going to let it play, play itself out to see where the information is. Um, but don't think because we're, we're not being more vocal that we're all in favor of this. That's all I have to say. Thank you. All right, one last call for the public on any comments. There is no one else, but I have a motion to close public comment. I'll make a motion. A second. Motion, second, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All right, and may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Brown. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you to everyone in attendance, especially the public that has commented tonight, and we shall see you at our next meeting on March 11th. Everyone have a good night. Thank Thanks, everyone. Good night.